So Ryan Dungey said in a previous interview, he said, um, in season, we'll do 20 to 30 miles two to three times a week. This is out on the cycling bike. Um, out of season, we'll do 30 to 50 miles on top of riding and training. Um, it's low impact and a simple way to be able to get out of the house. Second thing that he said um, is burpees. So when I don't have access to a gym, um, I'll do burpees in my hotel room. Okay, great for my cardio. Um, and the third thing, um, which is interesting, is yoga. So he said, um, I can't do a workout without stretching first. If I get right into a workout, I'm tight for the rest of the day. Um, yoga is also a great way to focus on breathing. Um, it opens up my chest and gets the air in. Um, so three um, interesting things there that Ryan Dungey does to be able to get fit for riding and racing. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, how do you actually apply that stuff into your life? Because chances are you're not a professional rider or a professional racer. You don't have 8, 10, 12 hours a day to be able to do burpees in your hotel room and wake up and do a yoga session in the morning and then pump out a whole heap of cycling every week. So what are the actual most important things that you need to that we can take from what Ryan's done to get fit for motocross um, and apply that to your own riding? For those of you that are new to the channel, uh, my name is Andrew Hammer. Uh, struggle with riding and racing fitness for 14 seasons of racing. Hopefully this video helps you to be one of those riders that doesn't struggle with those things. So how do we implement it? So I've got three things here. First thing is noting that there's two different types of cardio. There's long distance cardio and there's short distance cardio. So long distance cardio is where you've got a relatively low heart rate and you do that movement or keep that heart rate for a long period of time. So like what Ryan's doing, um, I think it'll be fair to say when he gets out on the bike, he's probably doing uh, a, lot of, a mixture of sprint work and a, a mixture of motos. So he's working both his long distance cardio and short distance cardio just while he's out on the bike. And then that way during the week, he can go out and cycle, he can do some lower intensity stuff. Now, for those of you that aren't lucky enough to ride for a living and be able to go um, riding on your motocross bike or enduro bike three, four, five times a week or whenever you please, you're gonna find another way to tackle those uh, those uh, cardio systems. So the long distance cardio, you can work that by doing longer motos on the weekend and um, building up your aerobic base through doing motos on the bike and getting bike time. Short distance cardio, you can work by doing sprints on the weekend on your bike, or you can do intervals during the week. So if you enjoy cycling, get out to a hill, do some hill sprints, um, or if you're training in the gym, jump on a rowing machine or exercise bike, do 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, do that for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Um, the whole goal there is just training intensity. So that's the first thing I'd, I'd take from that. Um, if you're not able to get out and cycle all the time or get out on the motorbike multiple times a week and do sprints. Second thing was the burpees in the hotel room. So that's probably not gonna be relevant for a lot of you guys because you're probably not doing as much racing and as much traveling as Ryan Dungey is. Um, or any pro motocross or pro supercross racer. So the great thing about that is you actually have an advantage because you can get in the gym, you can use the right equipment, you can stay in your, um, your same environment, you can make sure that your meal's prepared, you don't always have to be eating out or eating on the go or eating while you're traveling. Um, so that's just, a, um, I guess, something that puts you in a better position than what a lot of pro riders are. Um, third thing, if I can find my uh, dot points, is the yoga. So. Yoga, is yoga important? Is it something you should implement? There's so many things when it comes to fitness and training and nutrition that you can improve. But at the end of the day, you just wanna be focusing on what are the big rocks, the big things you need to do to improve your riding and improve your performance. Um, stretching can be very effective and is very effective for lifting and for moving. But for a lot of you, that's probably not gonna be the big rock that you need to be able to move. The big rock for you to be able to move is probably getting into the gym, doing some workouts, working on the cardio that we just talked about, um, or even building some strength. You might find that instead of doing an hour or half an hour of stretching, you might get benefit from doing half an hour of strength work. Okay, if you can get yourself a bit stronger, make the bike feel a bit lighter, use a bit less energy when you ride, um, you might find that in terms of bang for buck time-wise, it's gonna be better off to do half an hour of strength work or half an hour of gym work in comparison to doing half an hour of yoga. That doesn't mean yoga is not effective. It doesn't mean stretching is not effective. It just means you're probably going to get a higher return from doing the gym work, doing the strength work in comparison to doing a whole heap of stretching. 